This video on demand presentation of Big Red Wrap Up is made possible by the following sponsors. Big Red Wrap Up thanks these sponsors. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Putney, and welcome to the Champions Club here in Lincoln, Nebraska, just across from the Memorial Stadium, ready for a very special presentation tonight of Big Red Wrap-Up. You can see behind me Kevin, Adrian, wave Kevin, Kevin, Adrian, Blake, all back there, ready to review last week's big win over Illinois and also take a look at an even bigger game against Michigan State. Also, our chance tonight to say thank you to you, our viewers, for years of support of NET Sports. You know, each year, we bring you more than 200 hours of sports programming from Shadron to South Sioux, from Ogallala all the way to Falls City, and it's thanks to your support. High School State Football Championships, which are just six weeks away, all the way through the spring and fall in, in which we bring you some of the best sports programming in the state. So thank you for your support, and also we have an opportunity for you to pick up some terrific thank you gifts as a part of that. You see those here in front of me tonight. We'll be talking about that throughout the evening. But right now, time for a very special presentation of Big Red Wrap-Up. Let's go to Kevin and his two dynamic duo of linebackers. Here they are. and welcome to Big Red Wrap-Up Live from the Champions Club in Lincoln. My name is Kevin Kugler. Later on, Matt Davison, Jay Foreman are going to join us. Sean Callahan is going to stop by a little bit later on to tell us about how Nebraska did in the recruiting weekend with lots of recruits in town for a night game this past weekend. But of course, Nebraska did not fall into the trap. There were a lot of concerns after the Miami game and the emotion of that one ahead of the Michigan State game. How would Nebraska fare against the fighting line of Illinois. Well, as it turns out, Nebraska had no problems with Illinois. Adrian Fiala and Blake Lawrence are here. Just what the doctor ordered, right? An easy win on Saturday night? Well, it's it's we thought it was going to be, and it, actually it started out a little bit tougher, Kevin, as everybody saw. But then uh, I, I thought that our, our ground game in particular, and that's exactly how it happened, uh, would, would the powerful pounding offense that, our, uh, that they show would take over, and it did, over 400 and 50 some yards. Uh, our defense came up and held uh, Illinois to 76 yards. And they really took over the football game about uh, oh, <coughs> late in the first quarter, early in the second quarter, and took it from there. But what I liked about the whole thing uh, immensely, a week ago, we had three interceptions and 14 points. This past weekend, we had three interceptions and 14 points. That's six points, or, or uh, six interceptions and 28 points in two weeks, Kevin. Prior to that, one interception and zero. So our defense really coming along, and I like to see that. We had a total of 12 pressures, four sacks, uh, eight quarterback hurries, and just we were really putting pressure on the quarterback, and we needed to because this was a, a second-team guy who really hadn't played much, and we all knew that if we could get after this kid right away and, and make life miserable, uh, we'd have a pretty good chance of getting it done. We did. Uh, I was very pleased with the defense. Uh, all that trap stuff, uh, I'm not sure. You didn't, you didn't buy that? I didn't buy that, no. and uh, ho hopefully our team didn't buy that, but the real thing's coming up this weekend. Blake, your thoughts? Well, I, I was hoping that Illinois wasn't going to score so quickly on offense because they were so distracted by the shiny Nebraska uniforms. Uh, this is uh, – I like the uniform play. I think that it helps get the players pumped up, but that's really what I want to talk about tonight is, is kind of the miscue with the uniforms because the game – it was settled by halftime. When you see a guy, Amir Abdullah, almost get 200 yards at halftime, that immediately vaults him into the Heisman contention. I know that Illinois is not a great defense, but he's a player that's having a special year, so it's to be really fun to watch him. Uh, Tommy Armstrong didn't throw the ball very well, and he needed to get a deep pass to Kenny Bell to really get started. So that's something you got to look forward to uh, during Big Ten play is how is Tommy Armstrong going to get started? And it's great to rely on uh, Amir Abdullah, but Tommy also has to have his own kind of play because one or two teams might be able to stop Amir Abdullah. Yeah, Blake, that'll be very important this Saturday because Michigan State, as we talked about earlier, is a defense that will come in there and put it to you. 
Right. And he will have to throw the ball and throw it much better than what we've seen. And not only that, make good decisions. Yeah. Uh, that, that's been a problem from time to time. But that's key for him uh, this weekend and, of course, to stay composed. Well, let's right. talk about how you can get in touch with us if you don't happen to be at the Champions Club. There are many ways to reach out to us via the telephone. We've got our bank of phone operators waiting for you. Email, Facebook, Twitter. Feel free to get yourself all hooked up with us here tonight. We'd love to talk with you. And by the way, we don't have any phone answers. I just completely made that up because, as you can see, we've filled up this room with people, and we don't have anybody answering the phone. So email, Facebook, and Twitter are the ways you can get in touch with us. I promise you we'll be checking that throughout the night and making sure that you can get in touch with this show. Now, if you want to watch the show while you're on the road, be sure you download the app. NET Nebraska app is available on Android and Apple devices. Just go to netnebraska.org slash apps and you can check out anything that you want to see from NET right there with you wherever you go. Watch past versions of the show, watch current versions of the show. Really just watch Big Red wrap up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, wherever you are. That's what that app will do for you. Our sideline <laughs> survey last week's we asked you where do you think Nebraska will finish in the Big Ten West Division 71% of you said first 25% of you said second and then the rest of you basically just clicked on random buttons that looked shiny when you went to our website because you see a 3% and 1% finishing sixth our new sideline survey question do you think Amir Abdullah will win the Heisman this season 35% of you early voters have said yes 45% of you have said no, and a whopping 20% of you took the time to log on to the website to let us know that you don't know really what's happening at all. <laughs> we appreciate you doing that. Feel free to log on and cast your vote for I don't know what's happening on our website in our new sideline survey. There was a lot of discussion surrounding this game when it comes to the play of Amir Abdullah and what he's been able to put together through the first few weeks of this season is obviously very special. He's closing in on Amon Green's second place all-time rushing numbers. He's certainly going to have that before his career is done. And now Mike Rogier's number, which has stood atop the Nebraska rushing charts for a lot of people's lifetimes, is now in peril. And that's a record that a lot of folks thought was previously untouchable. And if Amir Abdullah stays healthy, the numbers are on track for him to be the all-time leading rusher. And again, this is a guy who was an afterthought in recruiting. This is a guy who was sort of a Oh, we got to grab another running back. We don't know what's going to happen with Braylon Hurd. Is he going to be eligible? Is he not? Let's grab this guy from Alabama. We saw his film. We flew down. We grabbed him. And he has a chance to become the all-time leading rusher in Husker history. Kevin, you're absolutely right. I've said this uh, many times here lately. The only thing preventing him from being in that Heisman situation, All-American situation, is his health. That's a, his biggest obstacle. If he stays healthy the rest of the year, he should be right there. He'll have a chair in New York uh, come December. So let's see if that happens because he can do Believe me, he can do it all. Run, block, catch, do everything. He's an inspiration uh, without without peer. And he's just a great guy. Yeah. You know, Amir yeah. Abdul is a great leader. He's a great um, representative for the state of Nebraska. So we're all cheering for Amir this year. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at some of the stuff that we saw this past weekend from Amir as we check out the highlights of Nebraska and Illinois. This will surprise you. Amir is featured prominently in these highlights. I know. I know it's crazy. Huskers showed up. That was a good sign. Good start for Nebraska as they make their way onto the field. Bo Pelini was there, the head coach of the Huskers. He made it out as well. Also a good sign. Tim Beckman was there, the head coach of Illinois. Now that all the parties are accounted for, let's get to the highlights. Starts off first play. And Amir Abdullah, 21 yards to the Nebraska 46-yard line. Good start for Nebraska. This would be repeated a lot, not only by Amir Abdullah, but Amani Cross, who appears to have reclaimed a firm hold on that number two eyeback spot, he goes over 100 on the night, 15 of that right here to the 16-yard line. The thing you like about Amani Cross is he hits, he hits the hole very quickly, makes good cuts, and then once he makes contact, uh, he'll, he'll get another three or four or five yards after that as we watch Amir take it in for that first touchdown. And there go the balloons, 7-0 Nebraska with the lead. But as has been the trend this year, the opponent comes out and goes to work. Geronimo Allison missed the week prior for Illinois. He is a big time wide receiver and as a guy who played his junior college football right up the road at Iowa Western and then Josh Ferguson 41 yards up the middle every single game this year. Opponents have marched out on that opening drive and put a touchdown on the board. Well, you've got to give them some sense of uh, accomplishment, but then shut them down the rest of the game. It's a great strategy. <laughs> Very good. Lulled them into a overconfidence. Tommy Armstrong with the pick. Poor throw across his body, into traffic, on the run. Those kind of mistakes 
paramount that you can't make this week when Nebraska makes it up the road to East Lansing. But the Huskers able to rally defensively. Riley O'Toole in all kinds of trouble. And Daniel Davey, not that you knew it from the guy calling the game because he couldn't see the number buried under those people. <laughs> that was me. But Daniel Davey gets the interception. And then Imani Cross, 10 yards up the gut to the Illinois 21-yard line as Nebraska goes back to the ground. And there you see what I was talking about right there. He got that football and got hit by the yellow line there and made up the field about six yards. So. And here's Wonderful Amir Abdullah stuff. down to the eight-yard line, just tripped up from behind. and. Why not give him the ball another time? Sure, that seems to work. Eight yards, touchdown, 10 play, 80 yard drive, 14 7, Nebraska. You know, Amir Abdul has found his way to the right side of the line of scrimmage more often than not this year. The offensive line is doing a great job on the right. Not really any holes you can count for on the offensive line this year. Nate Gary with the interception for Nebraska. He's been playing some good football. Remember that block? Yeah, you'll probably see that on a few highlight plays. Randy Gregory blasting one of the wide receivers for Illinois on the return and down to the five yard line. Nebraska gets a couple of extra feet on the penalty and then Amir Abdullah. Yep, you've heard this before. You've seen this before on the option pitch. Superman into the end zone 21 7 Nebraska. Good speed right here by Abdullah. And if, if you give him the ball, it's a race to the corner. Nine times out of ten, he is going to win that race. Pretty automatic as far as Abdullah goes. So you've set up Illinois for the home run ball. Tim Beck told us this week there is not a guy that he knows of that he's had that's been a better deep ball thrower than Tommy Armstrong. You saw it there, 63 yards, 28-7, Nebraska with a lead. Riley O'Toole, pretty good deep ball here. Pretty good catch by Geronimo Allison. And he takes it all the way in for the touchdown. And Illinois with the that's, answer down two scores. Kevin, that's one of the best catches I've seen in a long time. But Allison, the kid, uh, as you said, from Iowa Western, and, and fighting for the ball. The receiver's got to fight for the football, the same as the defensive back. He fought a little harder that time and got it. Fortunately for Nebraska, Amir Abdullah did not transfer after that touchdown, so he had the ball again and could start running again. Tommy Armstrong, Terrell Newby. Nice little weapon in the pass game for Nebraska on that one. A 20 yard pickup to the Illinois 32 drive would stall. Brown would come on and he would bang home the field goal and Nebraska with a 31 to 14 lead. That would be the lead that they took into the locker room at halftime. So third quarter comes Tommy Armstrong says all right let's find Kenny Bell. Kenny Bell dodging a couple tacklers gets down to the 32 yard line and then Tommy Armstrong says I can throw it. I can also be a weapon in the run game and he takes off down to the nine yard line. Huskers set up shop again. Now first and goal at the four. Imani Cross four yards powers in touchdown 38 14 Nebraska still enjoying the lead and now we move to later action in the fourth quarter of this game. Tommy Armstrong 22 yards. Kenny Bell at the Illinois 31 yard line. Fourth down and 22. Tommy Armstrong says, you know what? I'm not going to throw for this yardage. How about I just run for this yardage? Breaks the tackle, stiff arm, good balance, stays on his feet, gets 25, and he gets the first down. Incredible play by Tommy Armstrong. With fourth and 22, usually the odds are totally against you, but he made it work, and here's Newby going in uh, for the touchdown. An incredible uh, series right there, Kevin. That is the capper, and Nebraska with a 45 14 win Penn State lost earlier in the day that meant Nebraska the only unbeaten team left in the conference and that man plays a prominent role 624 yards for Nebraska total offense 458 on the ground impressive indeed time of possession big for Nebraska turnovers eh, two that's more than what Nebraska has been doing of late a bit of a concern certainly when you look ahead to Michigan State Nebraska had five of those turnovers a year ago. Well it's time now for us to go one more time with Blake Lawrence in the huddle. Tonight in the huddle, we're going to break down two plays. First, Nate Gary's interception return where he almost scores in the second quarter against Illinois. The play call is back itch one Y peel. Now, Bo, if you're watching, if you change the play call, maybe, but I think that's what this one's called. Back itch. That means we're going to have a linebacker blitz to the backside, and then one Y means the safety, Nate Gary, you can see him exiting the screen. He's going to be in the middle of the field, the one guy deep. The back blitz to the running back side. 
followed by another linebacker blitz. And if they're blitzing towards the running back, the linebackers are, then who's going to cover them? Well, Coach Bo, he's going to use the defensive ends to cover the running back. Interesting uh, choice on who's going to cover them, but too bad the quarterback doesn't throw it to the running back. He throws it to Nate Gary. Nate Gary gets the interception. As he's running down the sidelines, he sets up just a monstrous block. I apologize to whoever this is at Illinois, but goodness gracious. Probably lost some teeth on that one. Nate Gary, as he's stumbling around the, trying to get to the end zone, he runs out of gas. He gets tripped right here by an Illinois player, and you just watch him lay there. And Nate Gary, you can lay there, because he just ran 96 yards. I counted it all up. He ran 96 yards, and watch. The guys dogpile him, because he's not moving anywhere anytime soon. Nate Gary, great play, great play call by Nebraska's defense. The second play, how did Kenny Bell get so wide open on that 63-yard touchdown? Well, if you look closely, Illinois is caught in a corner blitz. That means the cornerback is going to blitz towards the quarterback on the backside here, which should be good for the corner when they do a play action fake because the safety, he's got coverage one on one with Kenny Bell. So he's got one on one coverage, but the safety, what he doesn't do is keep his eyes on Kenny Bell. As you can see, his eyes are in the backfield looking at the play action. Great cover uh, by Tommy Armstrong on that. And that gives Kenny Bell enough time to sneak behind him. He's about five yards behind the defense when he catches this and gives me an opportunity to draw my favorite thing, which is Kenny Bell's afro. <laughs> Kenny Bell, Nate Gary, two great players on a great Nebraska win Saturday. That's the only reason you chose that play, isn't it, Blake? Because you could draw Kenny Bell's afro. I could draw the afro, and I could watch that guy from Illinois get decapitated. <laughs> that's, really all, that's really all you cared about. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I do love that play call. It's not often that you see the safety kind of run back and play right in the middle of the field and try and catch anything the quarterback throws up. But Nate, Nate was in the right place, right time. I wish he had enough gas to score. Do you feel bad that you've now forced on Michigan State Week Bo Pelini to change one of his play calls, that you've now revealed it to everyone with the defensive call that you just showed us all? It's, it's interesting because sometimes I can, you know, see a little of the play calls, and I, I think that um, that's a familiar one to me. But well, those, those players, are, they're executing it better than I did. Not, <laughs> they, they look pretty good. But You're not giving up any secrets because Michigan State's got some people that know those things. And they know what's coming. It's yeah. just a matter of can you stop it. Well, I love that's, that. That's the thing. Nebraska was in the backfield. You know, Nebraska for the second game in a row was causing some havoc in the backfield, and that causes those those interceptions, those turnovers. Nebraska has to keep that up, and it's going to be creative. You're going to see the defensive ends covering running backs and different packages, but as long as they're getting to the quarterback and forcing quick throws, that they'll be okay. All right, guys. Former Husker Matt Davison. You know him. Some of you love him. He will join us next, but tonight is your chance to become a member of the NET Sports Partners Club. And here to tell you more, let's send it over to Larry Putney and Jenny Herstein. All right, thanks so much, Kevin. Hope you're enjoying this special presentation of Big Red Wrap Up. Did, now, you know, not only did Kevin just call the highlights there, but he actually called the game from Memorial Stadium. And I did heard you know? him, and he's great, isn't yeah. he? I, I mean, I you love You thought he was, to... he was great. Was he not? No, it was, it's okay. A lot of people <laughs> said differently, but that's, you know, I'm sure... You know he works hard at it, and so I, you know, I think he's, get, I think he's getting better, which is, which is. And did you hear Blake talk about the guy losing his teeth? No. Did yeah. Blake just talk about was I not paying attention or what? Have you looked? Have you noticed how perfect his teeth are? Yeah, maybe yeah. that's whose teeth he has. I know. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, uh, we want to say thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight from here at the Champions Club. A uh, very special presentation of Big Red Wrap Up, and also our opportunity to say thank you to you for supporting NET over the years and allowing us to bring you some of the best sports programming across the state, high school state football championships just around the corner, volleyball, even high school bowling mm -hmm. state championships that we're able to bring your way, not to mention Big Red Volleyball and, and, and productions like uh, Big Red Wrap Up. Uh, and terrific ways for, for people to uh, have an opportunity to continue to support NET tonight and uh, some terrific gifts as yeah, well. We really do. And you know, Larry, it's really expensive to cover high school championships. Big Red Wrap Up, for example, there are 30 people on the crew here tonight. So it's because of viewer support and people that support NET is how we can afford to uh, bring these programs for you. But we've got some really special gifts tonight. Our first one that we want to talk about is Three Decades of Excellence. It's a football that is autographed by the three Nebraska Heisman Trophy winners. It comes with a letter of authenticity in its own beautiful case with a special plaque. Um, we have one here tonight, but it is wonderful. Now, there's only about, I think, think 20 available.
So and the, a limited edition of about Very, 2, very limited, 2,000. Right. Most of those are off the market. If you wanted one, it'd be third, third hand. So NET is about the only place you can get these. They're very limited. So if you want this football, you need to be on the phone right now. And that's 800-989-8236, because these aren't going to last very long. Terrific opportunity to become a member of the Sports Partners Club. And with your contribution at $600, an opportunity to take home a, a Autographed football by the three Heisman Trophy winners at Nebraska. Another opportunity for a terrific experience on game day of high school championships, which are just across the road here at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, you know, we, we like to say we like to get you off the couch and actually experience NET, <laughs> whatever is happening. And on November 25th, it's the high school championships. Uh, the last game of the, of the uh, championships are Class B. So we put together this wonderful, very unique package where we're gonna tour the stadium. Um, we've worked with the sports, uh, our sports production co mm -hmm. team and we'll actually tour the truck. So we'll go through the truck and see what it's like to be behind the scenes there. Then we're gonna go up and visit you and Adrian in the uh, press box. That might box. not be the highlight of the tour. Oh, I it's... think it's kind of the highlight. So we'll head up there and we've got all kinds of things planned. So it'll be a really unique experience. And touring that truck is, uh, that is a phenomenal production facility and a mobile production facility that they use at NET. Yeah, and if you haven't been part of that, mm -hmm. um, it's just amazing. But it'll be parked right out here where it's kind of tonight, right in front of the Memorial Stadium. So it will really give you that unique experience. And we hear over and over again, a lot of people, their very favorite thing that we cover are high school championships. So this is a chance to be part of it. So you see there the Husker Stadium experience. Another opportunity, a very rare find mm -hmm. here, and not many of these signed a year. So at the level of 240, an opportunity to take home a football signed by Coach Tom Osborne as well as Bill Pelini. That's right, and uh, Coach Pelini, obviously he's got other things on his mind, so he signs very few footballs during the year. And we probably have, I'm gonna guess, maybe 80% of those footballs. We, uh, we worked with um, a company to get those balls. They're in stock. If you mm -hmm. want it for a holiday gift, they're perfect. But we have a limited number, so $240. Um, at 800-989-8236 is the number to call to get your ball. At the $240 level, a terrific opportunity. Tom Osborne, legendary coach at Nebraska, 60 and three in his final five years, three national championships in the final four. A terrific gift there. And our final item tonight, Husker Century, the three DVD set, an unlimited number of these. And what a terrific opportunity to go back and take a look at some of the real history in Nebraska football from the early days of the Bug Eaters and the yep. old Gold Knights, uh, the Coach Devaney era right up through the Coach Frank Solich era. Yeah, these are great. Produced by NET. Um, they cover from 1890 right. to 2001. And right now we know it's 125th year of uh, Nebraska football. So this starts at the very beginning. And if you're a Husker trivia fan, you know the perfect thing to do is to have these DVDs. So once again, a terrific opportunity for you to pick up the DVDs. Uh, you can see our live audience behind us here. And let's go back to Kevin uh, with the rest of Big Red Wrap Up. Kevin? That shows a lot about our offense. Uh, when we take care of the football, we can do anything. So we're just going to go into this week of just making sure that we take care of the football. You have four or five games under your belt. You start to hit your stride. I'm seeing a lot of good things, a lot of positives. But uh, we need to stop, uh, you know, the things that we got. We can't, you can't beat yourself. We just have to be prepared. You know, it's about us and what, and what we do, so how we prepare. So I feel like if we're sounding our technique, uh, if we're communicating, all of us are on the same page, we'll be able to handle them. All right, welcome back to Big Red Wrap-Up. It is time to bring in the illustrious intern once more to discuss the world of social media. What are you seeing out there? Uh, well, people are excited to get kind of the Illinois game out of the way. It was good to get that win, but the, I think the meet we were looking for is the Michigan State game coming, th coming up this week. And people are excited to see if we can go on national TV and uh, get the win down there in East Lansing. Are you seeing anything regarding the meat of Michigan State? Is that what's being referred to in social media, or is that just your term? I'd say that's my term. Oh, okay. We do have uh, some tweets from the Illinois game, a little bit of reaction here. Uh, Nebraska running back Amir Abdullah has 148 yards and two touchdowns versus Illinois. There are 43 minutes of football left. Pretty impressive game by him mm. on Saturday. And uh, here we have a tweet from Kenny Bell after his 63-yard touchdown. Uh, everyone needs a little love showed to him from time to time and as he hugs the ref for a little celebration. 
refs are people too. <laughs> and finally, we have from the Husker account, the uh, halftime show from the Nebraska band with the Fear Amir little uh, signage they had going. So that was great from the band. Yeah, that was really cool to see that whole story from the band. Now, this was a big weekend, not only for the game, but it was homecoming weekend as well. And as a current student for the, what, 10th or 12th year at the University Something of Nebraska, like you've, been, you've been here for a while. You're on the accelerated plan. Uh, what, did, what did you see from homecoming? Well, I got a chance to go out uh, before the festivities started on Friday and uh, talk to some people who made the floats and uh, just kind of get a little reaction on campus. I'm here with Corey Kerfman in front of a member of the SAE fraternity. We are here in front of the SAE house. Uh, Corey, I was just wondering what your inspiration was for this year's uh, homecoming decorations. The theme was 125 years of Nebraska football, and one thing we decided that players come and go, coaches come and go, games come and go, but really Memorial Stadium has been there from day one. I'm here with Nate of Sigma Chi, and we're standing out here in front of the Sigma Chi house. Nate, uh, what was your inspiration for your homecoming decorations this year? Well, um, we basically ended up doing what the sorority girls wanted to do. Uh, Amir Abdullah, he's been on Hot Streak lately. How many yards do you think he gets tomorrow? He's running 650 by himself. I'd say 230, because I'm... Abdullah's are highs, and that's why. And Amir Abdullah's been going off lately. Do you think he has another big game tomorrow night? Absolutely. And do you agree, yes or no, that he has the prettiest eyes in all of college football? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, definitely prettiest eyes. Yeah, for sure. Prettiest everything, actually. Don't take that out of context, but he's the best. He's the best. Do you agree, yes or no, that he has the prettiest eyes in college football? He has the prettiest eyes? Yeah. That's an interesting question. I would, yeah, he does. Yes. I think we all know that Taylor Martinez has always had the prettiest eyes in college football. Um, I'm not going to comment on his eyes, but I hear they're pretty good looking. <laughs> Why is it that the only time you were brushing your flowing locks back was when you were interviewing the college girls and not the college guys? Is there something, is there a tie in with that? You've never heard of the hair flip before? <laughs> I mean, that's how you get them. You're very good. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, the eyes comment that was obviously your, your lead question with most of those folks. I assume you're on the pretty eyes side. This is an uncomfortable conversation <laughs> in so many ways. I am 100% on the prettiest eyes for Amir Abdullah. Easily, right. easily. Hard hitting stuff you'll only get here on Big Red Wrap Up. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. No problem. Uh, in our Husker history segment tonight, we look back on one of the more famous plays in the history of Nebraska football just across the street at Memorial Stadium. Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch had numerous highlights that catapulted him ahead of the competition that 2001 season. But one fall afternoon in Memorial Stadium, one play would go down in Husker history. Black 41, flash reverse pass. Gives it back to Mike Stokes. He's going to throw it. He's got a man out. Yeah. 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 The number two ranked Huskers went on to win the contest 2010 over the then ranked number three Sooners, and Crouch became the first true option quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy. One of the more famous plays in the history of Nebraska football as we welcome somebody who's also part of a famous play. When I led into that play, I'm sure our guest thought, all right, it's going to be my play from Missouri. <laughs> Matt Davison was. It, it was not. No, it was it not. Was not. <laughs> all right, I, I'm sorry. Next and time you're on, we'll, we'll run it again. Yeah, stick well, around, Matt. I was busy during that time finding a hat. That is true. You That's do good. have you have a fine chapeau tonight. This is not, not yours, however. It, it's not. It's not. I found it right the over here. Young man out here in the front row. <laughs> yeah. the, royal, <laughs> the royal family donating the hat for Matt Davison's usage. To, Oh. <laughs> you, you can have it back. I just didn't want to blind everybody with the bald head. Yeah, so. it's pretty All right, I'll just put it right here. For yeah, it's, it's, it's the Devaney-esque hat, yeah. which is a good way to start off tonight <laughs> here at the Champions Club. We have a stack of questions for you tonight. Oh, and boy. Let's, so we're going to dive in, but, but before we get to viewer questions, just your overall thoughts. We're four games in plus the first conference game, so that's five. Where is this team right now? 
Well, the main thing is they're five and zero, oh, right? I mean, you can sit there and break this team down any way you want, but the main thing is they've gone out and they've gotten the job done. They haven't played great every second of every game, but there's a lot of teams that would love to be five and zero. Oh, most teams would, and so we're in a good good place right now. I think this team has gotten better up front each and every week. I think the offensive line played their best game on Saturday, and. And so they're really, I think, finding their stride right now offensively. And, and defensively, I think they've, they've come a long ways as well. A lot of younger guys have, have come along and played well. Um, I think they can still tackle better at times, but I think every team in the country could probably say that. So I'm proud of our team. I think they're in a good place. Matt, are they at a level right now where they can go up to East Lansing and repeat? They've won up there a couple of times now. Are, can they go up there and, re and repeat and play at that level that everybody seems to think uh, MSU is playing at a little higher level? Yeah, think absolutely. At that level? Absolutely. I, I, there's no doubt in my mind we can go win this game. I mean, you know, you look around the country and it's really hard to play your A game 12 weeks in a row. Most teams don't. And, and so who's to say Michigan State's going to play their A game? You know, who, who knows? And, and if they do, I still think we have a chance. Uh, we have found a way to move the ball against Michigan State each and every time we've played them. And this game is going to come down to probably five or six plays. You know, when you have two teams that have great players and, and two teams that are pretty evenly matched, with, which I think these two teams are, it's probably going to come down to about five plays in this game that are going to go a long way in deciding it. It's going to be an extraordinary play by one player or, or maybe a bonehead play by somebody. So we'll see. But it's probably going to be a close game, probably going to be a, a really hard-hitting physical football game. And uh, it looks like it's going to be kind of cold. Could expect some rain. And so there could be the elements could come into effect just a little bit in this one, too. You think a field goal? Maybe. You yeah, know, I think yeah. it could easily be a really close game. And, and, you know, I don't think either team is that much better than the other one, that it'll right. be a game that gets out of hand. But, you know, it, this game is going to come down to just a couple of things. You know, can Nebraska tackle with their front seven and, and force them to throw the ball where we have coverage in the secondary? Or do we have to bring an extra guy into the box to stop the run? And if we do, then that will expose us a little bit in the passing game. So that's what it looks like defensively. And, and then offensively, you know, we've found a way to run it against just about anybody. And, uh, and our offensive line right now is playing really well. Amir Abdullah is the best back in the country to me. When, when you look at a guy that has the ability to make – not much, three yards into nine. He does that most times. Um, when there's a hole, he's going to hit it. He has great patience to let the play develop, to let his offensive lineman uh, get into a position to give him a hole. So he just has the whole package. I mean, when you have that guy and you have an offensive line that's playing really well, we've proven we can run the ball against about anybody, and I expect us to do that again Saturday. Colton says via the Facebook page, if Nebraska beats Michigan State this weekend, will they go on to the Big Ten championship game, and could they have a chance to be a team in the college football playoff? Possibly. I, it, you certainly have the opportunity to do that if you win this game against Michigan State. And it's, it's one of those games, Matt, where you've got a chance to really reintroduce yourself in a big way to the national scene, don't you? Uh, there's no doubt about it. It's a great way to put it. You know, I was just over practice today, and I was talking to Kenny Bell, and, and I made the comment to Kenny that, you know, if you play four years, which not many guys do, you might play in five, six games in your career at Nebraska or wherever you play that's a game that's this big. And, and if you only play one or two seasons, like most players do, then you might get two or three opportunities to play in a game that's this big. And so I told him to enjoy it. You know, I told him to, to relish this moment. This is a big opportunity for this program, a, a big opportunity to get a big win. And really, you win this game and everything is on the table at that point. You have an off week. Uh, there's a lot of ranked teams playing against each other this week. So if you can win this one, you're going to move up the polls. Then you have an off week where other teams are going to lose. And then you get into a part of the schedule where you feel like you're better than a few teams with Northwestern and Rutgers and Purdue. All of a sudden, you know, uh, not to look too far ahead, but yeah, if you win this week, you could be into November and undefeated and, and ranked in the top 10. And, and then absolutely you're in the conversation for the playoff or at least a big time bowl game. And, and so, again, you don't have very many opportunities to play in a game like this. I remember being in practice in weeks like this leading up to huge games in the regular season or a conference championship or a, or a national championship. It's a different feel at practice. There's a different intensity. And I saw that today over there in, in the Hawks Fieldhouse. And, and so our players are feeling it. And you know Michigan State is too. Steve says, I don't like to watch your show after big embarrassing losses. We appreciate you adding that part. <laughs> Will I want to watch next week? The one thing I have a hard time seeing in this game, Matt, is an embarrassing loss. Even last year when Nebraska lost to Michigan State, they turned it over five times. It was a 41-28 game. I don't see either team getting blown out or embarrassed in this. Do you? Yeah, and it doesn't mean that it can't happen. Sure. Uh, but, but I think if these two teams played ten times, 
you know, probably eight or nine of them are going to be pretty close games. And so I think that's what you'll see Saturday. A again, if one team turns it over two, three, four times like Nebraska did a year ago, then yeah, this game could get out of hand. Maybe it's a three, a three score win for one or the other. But these teams are pretty evenly matched. They both know what they do and they know what they do well. And so these teams are going to stick to that. Michigan State isn't going to do anything crazy that we haven't seen most likely. And nor do I think Bo Pelini or Tim Beck is going to do a, a lot of things on Saturday that we haven't seen our team do before. These teams know each other well. The coaches know each other well. It's going to come down to execution. And again, if, uh, if one team makes a couple of big mistakes or if, if one team has an extraordinary play in special teams, a pick six, uh, something like that could, could totally change this game. But I, I expect it to come into the fourth quarter. We're live at the Champions Club tonight. Great studio audience on hand to watch this edition of Big Red Wrap Up leading into the Michigan State game, which is being looked at, obviously, for obvious reasons, as a pretty significant game in the course of the schedule for Nebraska this year. Uh, Sony, and I'm sorry, Sony, you're in the room. I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Wants to know, is it realistic that Tommy Armstrong can lead the Huskers and how will he do? Will the Husker offense show any new wrinkles? Well, just give us the whole game plan. Right, practice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what, do, what do you see from Tommy Armstrong's capability of going on the road, tough place against a very good football team, and leading Nebraska to a win? Well, when, when you, we talked about Tommy Armstrong this offseason, and the coaches talked about him, the one thing that you heard from players and, and from the coaches was his intangibles, that that was maybe his best asset. And, and so we knew coming into the season he's a great leader. He's a guy that, that tries to keep calm in the huddle. People want to follow him. And you always like that when you have a quarterback, you're standing in the huddle as a player, and you look at him, and he looks confident. You know, he looks like a guy that, that you respect and that you know he's ready to play and that you know you have a chance to win if he's, if he's in the huddle with you. I've been impressed not just with the intangibles this year, but with how he's played. He's a step faster. I think he's finishing runs harder than he did a year ago. Maybe that's just a confidence thing. I think the coaches have, have figured out and, and have got it through to him that, hey, we're going to have to have you carry the ball and be effective to carry it when teams are really going to key on Amir Abdullah. And so he's done a good job with that. And, you know, maybe I'm, I'm alone on this thing, but I'm not real worried about Tommy Armstrong's completion percentage. You know, we can sit here all day and, and look around the country and maybe there's five elite quarterbacks in all of college football. Is he one of them? I, I'm not sure. But a whole bunch of teams would love to have Tommy Armstrong. You know, to me, he's a really good football player, and I'm not worried if he's in the mid-50s in completion percentage. He throws the deep ball really well. Those happen to be pretty low completion percentage passes. And so to me, it comes down to not just the completion percentage, but it's if he's turned the ball over. And if he's not throwing interceptions, I'm okay with him being at 55, 54% completions because his yards per completion are high. And so, so I'm maybe in the minority on that, but I think he's throwing the ball well and, and he's obviously running it really well over eight yards of carry. And Matt, toss, toss a bouquet to the offensive line too, because they've really, they've really come on. Yeah, and Aid, you know, we, we maybe talked about this before the season, but these offensive linemen, I think they're all good, but they hadn't played together at all, really, as a unit. And so there, a few guys had played a little bit, but none of them had really played together. And, and so I think you saw some breakdowns early in the season against McNeese State. You saw some. You saw a few against Fresno State. Uh, but these guys are starting to learn how to play together. And up front, you're definitely a unit that has to play together. They're playing really well right now, and, and they're motivated. They know we can run it on anybody. Matt. Jordan Westerkamp's catch behind the back. <laughs> best Husker catch of all time, right? <laughs> I'm just trying to say, is that we, the best We couldn't get through the segment without you bringing that up. <laughs> you know? that's right, yeah. that's no, I mean, look, that, that's one of those plays you can't teach it. You, can't, yeah. you don't practice it. You know, it's just one of those, you either have the instincts and the, and the hand eye coordination to make the player or you don't. Jordan's a great player. You, <laughs> you fool with it is what you do. Yeah, you I mean, yeah, you, you mess around with you it in practice. With, you don't yeah. think it's going to happen in a game, but hey, he made the play. All awesome. Right. Matt Davison, unfortunately, we are already out of time, but we really appreciate you stopping by tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks to the crowd for coming yeah, out tonight. Great group tonight. No question about that. Jay Foreman is going to join us next, but first, this is an opportunity for you to join the NET Sports Partners Club tonight. And with more on that, let's go back to Larry and Jenny. All right, thanks very much, Kevin. Great to uh, have you with us here tonight as we have a very special Big Red Wrap-Up and an opportunity for you to continue to help us bring terrific sports programming like Big Red Wrap-Up right into your homes. I'm with the Director of Development for NET, Jenny Herstein. 
always good listening to Matt Davison. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's great. And uh, especially when we uh, pledge his poster with the catch. You know, the... <laughs> it always does well. So that's always it? great. That's right. <laughs> we have some other terrific opportunities for you uh, to be part of the Nebraska Sports Partners Club. We're going to walk through those and show you what kind of opportunities you have tonight with your contribution to NET Sports to help us continue to bring terrific sports programming into your home. But, Jenny, also an opportunity to just be part of the Nebraska Sports Partners Club comes with some terrific benefits. Yeah, it really does. You know, we formed the Sports Partners Club about eight years ago, um, and this is like-minded people that absolutely love all the sports on NET. So we decided we've got to come up with some benefits for these people. Um, and so every year, one of my favorites is our annual Sports Partners Club breakfast. So if you join NET, pledge during this program or any time to sports, uh, we'll invite you annually to that Sports Partners Club breakfast. You're at NET, you get to see the big red wrap-up set. Uh, we take you through the truck. The crew explains exactly what, what all that's about. Um, and then we have a wonderful speaker, uh, Sean Kell or uh, sorry, Sean Eichhorst was right. one of his very first um, speeches that he did was our Sports Partners Club. So it's a great Saturday morning in August when we're still undefeated in every sports and and you'll be invited to that if you become a member of the Sports Partners Club. So terrific opportunity to become a, a sports club partner. And as a thank you, you're going to get some terrific gifts tonight by calling this evening and pledging your support to the NET Sports Partners Club. So a lot of opportunity, including this terrific football that you see in front of you. You might have seen it moments ago. Signed by Nebraska's Heisman Trophy winners, Eric Crouch, Johnny Rogers, Mike Rozier. Limited edition. Only 2,000 of these were signed, and we have a very limited amount of this, so please call now and get your Husker Heisman autographed football. And that's right, Larry. It's 800-989-8236 is how you get that football. And just tell them that you're looking for the three decades of excellence. Um, these are extremely unique. There is, uh, you can't see it on there, but there's a special plaque uh, that talks about the three decades of excellence. It's in a beautiful case. The case itself is gorgeous. It's got that mirror on the back that you can um, see the the uh, signatures and you can see the official logo of three decades so there's there's the signatures mm -hmm. um, six hundred dollars and again those are extremely limited and we've got uh, about the three hundreds and a reminder there's another opportunity for a terrific experience right here at memorial stadium coming up in just about six weeks you get to sit in the skybox watch the class b state championship game but an entire experience around that opportunity with your pledge of $280. Yeah, that's right. This is one of my favorite things to do is how do we dream up these absolutely wonderful experiences that you can't just do on your own, but we'll tour the stadium. You'll go through the uh, NET truck, uh, the, our mobile production truck, and then we'll go up into the uh, press box in between games, say hello to Larry and Adrian, and That'll see what it's like up right. there. Yeah. I think it will be a highlight. I hear there's this like a war board up there with all that's of the information. That's Adrian's war board. I know, I'm excited right. to see that. So this is very unique, and for uh, $280, you and a friend, um, it's for two tickets, uh, can join us on November 25th. Should be a terrific opportunity. Also other opportunities with your pledge tonight at the $240 level, another autograph football, limited number of these as well, signed by one of the best coaches in collegiate football history, Tom Osborne, and a current Nebraska head coach, Bo Pelini. Yeah, that's right. And um, obviously Coach Pelini doesn't have time to sign a lot of footballs, but we've got mm, the majority of them that are, that are available. Otherwise, you'll have to wait for an entire another year. So they make a great holiday gift uh, for any Husker sports fan for $240. So really encourage you to call now if you'd like to get that autographed football of Tom Osborne and Bo Pelini. One other opportunity at the $80 level, Husker Century, a three-part DVD series. This is really part of the NET documentary documentaries that are so well known and such a terrific job done on this going all the way back to the 1800s, the beginning of Nebraska football right up through the national championship years and Nebraska playing in the last national championship in 2002 against Miami and the Frank Solich era. Yeah, that's right. And even if you think you know a lot about Husker football, um, I grew up with brothers and parents that always went to the football games and I thought I knew everything about Husker football, but not until you watch these documentaries um, do you have any idea and it's so wonderful. But at that $80 level, too, I mean, there's six, almost seven hours worth of wonderful Husker history there. And you become a member of Sports Partners Club. So terrific opportunity. Give us a call now, 800-989-8236.
This year, more than 14,000 Nebraskans will be arrested for drinking and driving. It's embarrassing, expensive, and traumatic, but nowhere near as traumatic as it is for the drinking drivers who cause more than one-third of all Nebraska traffic deaths. Drink and drive, and this could be you or someone you love. Make the right choice. Make sure the keys are in the hands of a non-drinking designated driver. Remember, if you drink and drive, you could lose your dignity, your money, or your life. A message of concern for you and your family from the Nebraska Office of Highway Safety. Great audience on hand as we welcome you back to the Champions Club. I'm Kevin Kugler. Adrian and Blake are here. Our special guest, Jay Foreman, standing by to join us in just a moment. But of course, a guy who's been a lot of conversation topic, not only this year, but last year, Nebraska's starting quarterback, Tommy Armstrong, taking over for Taylor Martinez a year ago. Only one loss on his record as a starting quarterback, and he's got a chance to get a little vengeance for that loss coming up this weekend. We had the chance to get up close with Tommy Armstrong. Uh, it's helped me a lot, you know, being able to play in front of 30, 25,000 fans. You know, it's not 90,000, but it, it's it's a little bit, you know, more than the average, you know, high school game in high school. And uh, it, it helped me a lot just being able to play in front of a big crowd like that, being able to, you know, overcome certain situations because, you know, I've played in the state championship games where I've won. I've played in the state championship games where I lost. And uh, it, it's actually helped me a lot just by overcoming certain situations and being a leader. The guy that I need to find that I'm, you know, trying to get better at is Amir, you know. That guy, he can make a first down to a touchdown, you know, three or four yard catch into a 60 yard touchdown. So, you know, I, I'm trying to get better at that and, you know, find that guy knowing exactly where he, where he's going to go, where he's going to be. And, you know, that's a few times I, you know, I, I should have hit him. I didn't, I just couldn't find him and stuff like that. Yeah, it always has to. I have to improve each and every week. And, uh, I think that you know this this last week just humbled us uh well humbled me as a leader just being able to you know overcome something like that with these guys and you know just being able to move on to the next week and you know go about the right way this 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 week coming up uh honestly Amir you know uh you know that guy he's you know he he like he said before he just he's going to be honest after the game he addressed us the right way and um uh, you know he told us you know we got the win, but it wasn't good enough. You know, if it was a conference game, if we play, you know, Michigan State or Wisconsin, you know, it's a blowout win for them. And uh, that's something that we can't do because, you know, we're not going to be playing here when we play Michigan State or Wisconsin. And uh, if we play like that, it's not going to be pretty. Now, the leadership Tommy Armstrong shows is very evident, and it's one of the big reasons why Nebraska recruited Tommy Armstrong. They saw that leadership, and they went out and got that for their quarterback position. Jay Foreman is our guest, former Husker linebacker, kind enough to spend a little time with us tonight on Big Red Wrap-Up. I know you like a lot of the things you've seen from this Nebraska football team this year, and you've got to like what you see from Tommy Armstrong from a leadership standpoint. Oh, most definitely. It's night and day since we were, you know, I was on the show last year where your leadership was lacking. Tommy was a, was a freshman. Uh, the way he's grown in a matter of six to nine months has been phenomenal. And his, his, his leadership, not only on the team, not on offense, but on defense. And you have guys that aren't afraid to speak up, but they say the right things and they go out and back it up on, on the field. And that's what's really important uh, now with the, such a young team with a, a psyche that needs to be built up but then also pushed and, and encouraged to go out and do well as well. Jay, when you, when you take a look at it, is, is a lot of that attributable to maybe Amir and his influence? Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah, and it's amazing. I was just thinking as I was driving over here, just a year or so ago, everybody had questions about Amir. Can he replace Rex? Can he hold on to the ball? Can he be the bell cow? Now it's like he's not getting enough carries. Right. <laughs> and, and you look at the way he is off the field in, in his infectious personality and how he has a, a quiet demeanor but very, very confident and how he pushes people the right way. Uh, I think that's really bled over into Tommy, but then over to the defense as well. Well, you talk about the, the defense and the personality and kind of the swagger that they're playing with. The Miami game brought out a lot of fight from this Nebraska defense. It carried over into Illinois with these turnovers. So who do you see as kind of emerging leaders with – the Nebraska defense. Oh, you know, you know, crazy enough, and, and it's different for me when I played. You know, the, the DBs were out on the island. I think it's Josh Mitchell. Uh, for a little guy like that to take on a, a lineman, it was, was really showed me. The thing about these guys that's different than the years past is that um, Miami tried to come in, I guess, and punk them and tried to get physical with them. And they usually might have maybe, you know, backed down a little bit. To a man, they didn't back down. And it wasn't fake. It wasn't like, hey, let's just try to show something and let the ref get into it. They let, let Miami know that we 
this is our home field advantage. It's not gonna, it's not, you're not going to take it from us, and that's something that's going to help them this week, uh, hopefully against Michigan State. I know you have to like what Nebraska was able to do with Randy Gregory this past weekend on defense. Every time you looked, Randy was coming into the backfield from a different angle or a different spot. He said today that he likes playing as a stand-up guy. Yeah. Would he translate to that guy at the next level? Oh, yeah. You know, everybody talked about his weight problem, so he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Because <laughs> this is one thing that you can't coach in the NFL. That's a legit 6'6", you know, 235, 40 pounds, whatever he is. And I imagine he's going to run a what a four, five, four, six. You can't coach that, so he's already ready. His skill set and his potential is off the off the charts. The fact that he can play on his on two feet and then rush the passer, that's going to make him a lot of money. And he's showing it every Saturday uh, the last two weeks what he can do. Uh, another quick note from practice while we're talking, Randy Gregory. Josh Mitchell back at practice today. Amir Abdullah back at practice today. There were points in the game on Saturday where it looked like they were banged up a little bit. They were both out there. Good to go. No David Santos yet. Yeah. So do you expect to see against the Michigan State, can they survive like they did against Illinois using six and sometimes seven defensive backs on the field? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't, I don't think the, the no linebacker look will probably work against uh, Michigan State because Michigan State is it. They're uh, – they're a grown man's team. They're all they're developed players that come in and they need to be developed. So they're ready to play. They're physical. They're taught and they're coached well. Um, and they run downhill. They have a power running game. And so you, I'd look to for you know maybe three and then sometimes four linebackers. A four four look. Sometimes you see from Bo and the defensive coaches to throw a little monkey wrench into Michigan State because I think they can hold up, hold up well on the outside. Uh, they just can't get too cute. I think if they just line up and play base defense, I think Nebraska would be all right. Yeah, their their running game is much much better than Illinois. I mean. Illinois really didn't have a running game, quite frankly, but MSU does. Jay, how about this this night game? You know, yeah. talking about this this big on the road night game. What does this mean not only for this season, but for Bo Pelini for for the seniors on this team? Well, I, I think for the, the the psyche of the whole Nebraska program, we've you know we had the the you know the laps with with Callahan, and now we're slowly but surely building back up to to being relevant, and we haven't won that you know the so-called big game, a game that we're maybe we're not supposed to win or against a ranked team that's not injury depleted. This is a, a team against Michigan State that's set up, teed up for Nebraska to win. I always say styles make fights. Uh, Nebraska's offense matches up very well uh, scheme-wise against Michigan State's defense and vice versa. I think with our maturity in the back four and then obviously with the freshmen coming in with different packages, I think it bodes well for Nebraska in the passing game, which Michigan State has improved on from last year. Uh, so that's, you know, that's where I looked at advantage for Nebraska in this game. Yep. So you, like Scott and Elkhorn, who wants to know, would beating Michigan State get Nebraska some national respect? You believe yeah. this is the national respect game? Oh, no Nebraska. doubt. No, I mean, no doubt. I think this is a game uh, kind of put the, the, the naysayers, you know, on the side against, for Coach Pelini, but then also for the program to get back to where we want to be and what everybody, you know, thinks of Nebraska football. We want to get back to national prominence. Uh, Michigan State has built the program up, so they built it up for us to beat them. So let, let's go up there and beat them and get what we deserve. Uh, Josh, who's here in the crowd, wants to know how many runs will Amir Abdullah have this season? <laughs> oh, well, you better get as many as we need them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and in the big games, we want them, you know, 25 to 30. And I think his his big deal is touches because he's such a, as we saw against McNeese State, he's such a factor outside of the, the you know, out of the backfield. Uh, it's just his touches. I think that he can run with power. I think he's he's a or he's a running back that would give would give me a lot of problems because he's short, stocky, powerful. Then he knows to go in and out of the holes and really doesn't really go where the play's designed to go. But he makes his own plays and he makes a lot of mistakes of the offensive line look very very good. Are you talking 25 to 30 total touches or just rushing? I, I like 25 carries and I like five more uh, 25 carries, five catches. I like total touches and, and if it gets tight. He's got to go back and return the yeah. kick or punt, too. Yeah. But Pearson L is good, but I think I like Amir a little bit more on kickoff uh, right now. And I think, you, you know, look, if the game's on the line, he's the best player in the conference. I'm going to ask go you what I ask everybody as far as talk shows go. Do you really want Amir Abdullah re returning kicks? Uh, well, ideally, no. Um, but when it comes to the point in the game, if you need a play, you put your best player back there and you see what happens every time. That whole McNeese State last drive was Amir Abdullah. Big return, gets one catch, game over. Yeah. I'd, I'd roll my dice so again. Critical and, situations. Critical situations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, question from the crowd. A lot of Heisman talk for Amir. I know you're doing a lot of work in Houston on the yeah. weekends, doing a college football show down there on Comcast. How much Heisman talk are you hearing when you leave 
Now, right. around here, obviously, everybody says, yeah, I'm here for oh, Heisman. Yeah. yeah. How much are you hearing outside of the borders of the state? You know, ever since that McNeese State game, it's infectious. You know, in the studio, the Nebraska game's on. Everybody's asking about Amir. What about him? Uh, just look, what he's done this year, the way he's elevated his game and taken the team really on his shoulders and his leadership, not only just on the field but off the field, he's set up to win the Heisman. He's kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and this is a game, look, if he hits Michigan State up for, say, 150 yards, a couple touchdowns, and win, we win the game, he's got to be the front runner. So, so with this running style of Amir Abdullah we talked about, it's kind of weird to think that he's got the power of a big guy, but he's got the elusiveness of, of a small guy. I mean, who does he remind you of playing back in the NFL and some of these guys that you've seen? Is there anyone that he really you know, gives you a feeling yeah. that maybe he's a Barry Sanders yeah. type guy? I don't, I don't yeah, know. Uh, maybe, you know, he has, you know, and I, I don't want to put too much pressure on him. He has a unique skill set that's so much better than last year. It's, it's, it's weird that he can make people miss in such tight quarters. It's, it is Barry Sanders, but then he has the uncanny power of a Terrell Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, he has the vision of Marshall, Marshall Falk that I played against. But if I had to compare him to somebody, it would be Edron James. Edron James was a bigger, taller back. But when you look at Edron James and what he did with that Indianapolis Colts offense line, it's just reminiscent of Amir Abdullah, and he's a Hall of Fame player, I assume, in the future as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting comparison. So Jay Amir Ford. for your Hall of Fame, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 we just skip it all. No, no pressure. He's just a combination of four or five unbelievable runs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jay, one, one of the things that Tim Beck has talked about that he likes from Tommy Armstrong is there are no negative plays, usually, with Tommy Armstrong. Does a good job of keeping the play going forward or the drive going forward. Doesn't take a lot of negative plays. We saw him make a couple of ill-timed throws this past weekend. Is there a, if, there, if there's a flaw in Tommy's game is that he sometimes stays in the pocket too long and creates an issue for himself? Yeah, that's probably his only negative, and that just comes with experience. Right now, he's just trying to not lose the game, and he's starting to grow as a player to win the game. Uh, and I said it even coming into the season, this offense could be better than even it was last year, even with Taylor's playing. And the reason why is because when Tommy runs the read option, runs the option plays, he makes the correct read. He did it as a freshman uh, where he wasn't really good as a, as, a, as, a, was a, as a passer, but he made up for it as a, as a runner. And this year he's running more physical. So when you run physical as a quarterback, that's another dimension that we didn't have last year or maybe even the year before that. And he's sure on his decisions whether or not to give it or keep it. Yeah. I, I've noticed that. Yeah, he's decisive. Last, last year, that wasn't quite the case. Yeah, he's very decisive. He, yeah. I mean, he's gotten so much better, and it's the little things that starting, you're starting to see yeah. on the field. And every week he seems to get better, even though his, his completion percentage was low against Illinois. I think this week, bigger game, I think he tends to play well when you watch him even in high school. When you look at an X factor, we've had a couple of questions on the Facebook page. Adam wants to know if Michigan State contains a mirror who becomes the X factor on offense. Um, well, my guy, I would say special teams have to be special. I think Pearson L, he gets off the bus with some power boosters. So he is my <laughs> X factor guy just because he's a freshman, came in and said, I want to be the man, and he's went out and done it. And the thing is, Nebraska special teams has always failed them in big games. Last year against Michigan State, when the game was tight, what did Michigan State do? They ran a special teams fake, pretty much took control of the game and sealed the game. Now we have a legitimate returner that wants to be back there. And then you have somebody that wants to be back there, you're going to have guys that want to block for him. And that's something that you don't see a lot out of a true freshman. Kevin, I'm going to throw something out here. All right, we throw it out. We haven't talked about it. It's live TV. We can do what we want. Okay. <laughs> Nobody's talked about Drew Brown and the job he's done. Last game, Eight kickoffs, seven yeah. in the end zone, spot up to 25, see what you can do. Last year against Michigan State, their average starting field position was the 42-yard line. Ours was the 21-yard line. I think Drew is a very integral part of what's going to happen Saturday. If he, can kick, if he can kick that ball in the end zone, start him at the 25, we got a leg up on them. But I just wanted to recognize Drew A leg Brown. up. I like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty good pedigree, right? You know, Chris Brown wasn't too bad, and his brother's real good, too. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. You know, that's, you know, you look at those seven drives, uh, the difference between, that's 140 yards. That's essentially a touchdown and a half. That there you go. State was ahead of us. And their offense wasn't as good as it was this, this year. So that's where they got the advantage on Nebraska, short field. Jay Foreman, terrific work tonight. Thank you so much for stopping out. Thanks we really appreciate me. it. Great stuff Thanks. from Jay Foreman. Sean Callahan is coming up next, but a chance for you again to become a member of the NET Sports Partners Club. Back we go to Jenny and the other guy. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, Kevin. I appreciate it. I, you know, I don't know, Jenny, if you've noticed this, but whenever they go back to the set with the guys know. there, the, the crowd goes crazy. I know, but they don't do that for us. I know. Kevin throws over here, and it's like we hear crickets. I guess so. They're not paying attention to us.
Thank you. <laughs> it worked. It's about time. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So I am with Jenny Herstein. I'm Larry Putney. Hope you're enjoying this special presentation of Big Red Wrap Up, our chance to say thank you to you for your contribution to NET Sports and allowing us to bring you some terrific sports programming over the years and an opportunity to continue that contribution here tonight and some real nice opportunities with your donation. Yeah, that's right, Larry. And you know, the only reason that we're able to bring you Big Red Wrap Up and high school championships and Nebraska volleyball and UNO hockey mm -hmm. and all of the other sports that NET covers is because of donations from uh, viewers just like everyone that's watching right now. So that we appreciate. So we try to come up with some unique gifts for people to say a way for us to say thank you. And one of the things that we have, which are very limited right now, we've been talking about this tonight, but that is that um, three decades of excellence, that Heisman football that's signed by the three Heisman Trophy winners for $600.00. And that includes the case, the letter of authenticity. We even have a photo of the um, Heisman signing it too. So you get that entire package for 600. And as you said, Jenny, limited amount here. Yeah, so please, if, if you're interested in this, we don't have many and there were only 2000 signed back in 2002. So not many left and if you're interested, the first one of these that ever went on auction went for $7,500. Yeah, it did, number Myers. one. That's yeah. right, that's right. And that was 2002. Right. So a lot of those are sitting on somebody's shelf at home <laughs> as right. a prize. So yeah. um, NET has a few of those left, but only a few. So 800-989-8236 for the ball. And then also another opportunity for you as well, not, not only the uh, Heisman Trophy signed ball, but Two head coaches, Tom Osborne, the legendary coach who won three national titles in his last four years, and current Nebraska head coach, Bo Pelini. You know, Nebraska hasn't won a conference title since 1999. Tom, Tom won one five of his last six years, right? So this could be the year. Wouldn't it be great to have an autograph ball from Bo Pelini the year they do it? Yeah, and I think what a great Christmas present to your, your favorite Husker fan. I mean, I, somebody would really, really enjoy that. So. That uh, $240 uh, gift to NET gets you the Tom Osborne and the Bo Pelini sign ball. 800-989-8236. And then finally, Husker Century, a three-part DVD series. Part of the NET documentaries really chronicles Nebraska football from the early days, uh, from the Bill Glassford era all the way through Tom Osborne and uh, Frank Solich. Yeah, that's right. And uh, there are some names in there I'm sure a lot of Husker fans have never even heard of, and it's a very interesting stories. Um, so for 80, a gift of $80, and you become a member of the Sports Partners Club, and with the $80, you get our member card, which entitles you to two-for-one dining, um, two-for-one online deals, two-for-one bed and breakfast all across the uh, state. So really your membership, that $80, is paid for the, almost the first time you go out to dinner for the two-for-one with the member card. And really knowing that you are contributing as part of the NET Sports Partners Club to high school athletics that are brought into your living room throughout the year by just a terrific crew at NET Sports who spend many days here at Memorial Stadium throughout the year and of course the Devaney Sports Center for High School Volleyball and the Pinnacle Bank arena for high school basketball really a terrific opportunity to continue your support of net and allow us to bring you some terrific sports programming right into your living room and you know larry i just want to mention a few of the towns we have heard from all across the state right. holdridge um not in nebraska but las vegas so someone must be streaming us in las vegas thank you um, a lot of people from omaha have called columbus my hometown has represented all 1,600 people in that town at one person pledge, so a few more from there, from Stanton. Uh, Lawrence, Fremont, Clay Center, so a lot of people across the state love what they see on NET. So we really appreciate you calling in and pledging to NET and the, and the uh, Sports Partners Club. Once again, a terrific opportunity, a couple of autograph balls from coaches, the legendary, the legends, the, the Heisman Trophy winners, that ball right here in front of us, an opportunity to, at the $600 level, and again, a limited number of these balls. So give us a call at 800-989-8236. Yep. Salutations. As typical Nebraska organisms, we require two boiling caffeinated beverages and a state-specific game of chance, please. You mean a Nebraska pick five ticket? Affirmative. You want a quick pick? Specify. The computer picks your numbers. Computer. Computer. Yes, yes. Yes. Computer. 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 Yes. Computer. Computer. With Computer. a fifty thousand dollars starting jackpot, drawing six days a week, and one in eight odds of winning a prize, Computer. there's only one Computer. place in the universe you can play Nebraska Pick Five. You know, guys, you might want to skip the boiling caffeinated beverages.
Local Champions Club just across the street from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. Welcome back to Big Red. Wrap up that crowd applause you hear all for Jenny and Larry after what they did. That's all for them because they were asking for a lot of it. Now we all know injuries are part of the game and sometimes they become a bigger part of the game than we'd like. We're here to help you with a little bit of an understanding of some of the bigger injuries in sports as we welcome back injury play with our Dr. Rob Rhodes. I'm Dr. Rob Rhodes with Injury Play, and welcome to Injury Minute. Today we're talking about a high ankle sprain. A high ankle sprain is an injury to the large ligaments above the ankle, or what we call the syndesmotic ligaments, that join together the two bones at the lower leg, the tibia and fibula. Unlike a lower ankle sprain, high ankle sprains are caused by an outward twisting of the foot and ankle. When the placement of the tibia and fibula remain normal in their anatomy, the injury is judged stable. When two or all three of the ligaments are torn and the lower leg bones are free to move, the injury is deemed unstable. Stable high ankle sprains can be treated similar to a low ankle sprain with splinting, rest, compression, ice, and elevation, and may take up to six weeks to heal. Unstable ankle sprains require more treatment and most often warrant surgery. One or two screws are inserted into the bone during surgery to stabilize the ligaments until they have healed. Expected recovery time can vary for up to six months. I'm Dr. Rob Rhodes with Injury Play, and this has been your Injury Minute. Good to have Dr. Rhodes with us again, and good to have back with us in what my mom says is her favorite segment. That's praise for you, Sean Callahan here to talk some recruiting. It's quite a compliment. Thank it you. It is, yes. Yeah, she's seen me a lot over the years, so she really yeah, has no like interest in watching much. me. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Blake. Okay. Appreciate that. All right. Let's, uh, before we get to Sean, though, let's talk sideline survey. One chance for you to log on and cast your vote. Perhaps you say yes, perhaps you say no, perhaps you're undecided. Do you think Amir Abdullah will win the Heisman this season? 49% of you say no, 37% of you say yes, and 14% of you are not 100% sure how a computer got in your home in the first place. So you can log on and cast your vote in our sideline survey. Sean Callahan is here to talk about recruiting. And Sean, when you look at this past weekend for Nebraska recruiting, it was good for Nebraska recruiting for a year down the road, right? Yeah, you know, Nebraska uh, had a lot of guys in for this 2015 class, but it was the 2016 visitors that ended up being the storyline. Nebraska landed two commitments from really top offensive lineman prospects for them. Uh, Brian Brokop uh, out of the Chicago area in Illinois, right now a high three-star guy, but could end up being probably a four-star lineman and really one of the top targets for Nebraska uh, ended up committing. And then uh, the other guy, John Reardon, uh, his father played at Nebraska in the 80s. Uh, he's had two brothers that played at Notre Dame and Wisconsin, uh, but considered right now uh, the number one player in Iowa for 2016 uh, already had a number of Division One offers, and they've got these two guys locked up. And um, you know that you look at the offensive line class this year, uh, they lose three guys. The following year, they're going to lose six guys. Um, so they have nine scholarships opening up on the offensive line. Uh, they're well on their way to filling those numbers, uh, especially when they added two really good players in Brokop and Reardon uh, to that mix. Tell me about overall. This is the, the list of the recruits visiting for the Illinois game. Of the recruits for the 2015 class, where does Nebraska stand? Well, I think it was big just to get Nikhil Lundy and uh, Aaron Williams on campus. There are already Nebraska commits. They have yet to visit Lincoln. Uh, so to get them there with their families and experiencing Lincoln, I think was big because more than likely they're both going to get some other teams from the South that try to approach them, especially Lundy. He's a very talented player and Aaron Williams for that matter. But Aaron Williams is going to uh, be an early signee and be here early. Uh, but just to get them here and establish that was big. Avery Anderson's been here a million times. They don't have to worry about his commitment. He's probably the most loyal guy, but they had two other guys here. Uh, Dedrick Young out of uh, Illinois, uh, excuse me, Arizona. Uh, he's a linebacker and I know that they had a great visit, but the surprise visitor was Stanley Morgan. Uh, he's a four star wide receiver out of Louisiana, rivals top 250 guy. His parents came with them and that's always the X factor uh, because usually if the kid comes has a great visit, that's fine, uh, but you usually would like to have a mom or a dad or somebody with them um, that can help them make that decision in the process. And uh, when the parent comes, that usually is a good sign for Nebraska. Sean, there's a lot of buzz about these uniforms that Nebraska <laughs> wore on Saturday. And I didn't play that long ago, but I, I was not appreciative of them. I mean, it was hard to read the numbers. I didn't enjoy it that But are the recruits digging it? Did they like the new look Nebraska? Or what are you hearing from the recruits? I, I didn't, Honestly, I didn't really hear a whole lot, and 
Um, it's kind of one of those things. We saw the uniforms in August. I guess nobody thought they looked bad in August, but all of a sudden <laughs> when they roll them out, um, it, I don't think it got the, the feedback nationally that maybe Nebraska would have liked. What did you like? Did you like them? I, I was. I would mean, you wear one? <laughs> well, if I was on the team, I'd have to wear okay. one. <laughs> but, uh, Why is that one player not wearing the uniform? <laughs> not good enough. It'll be interesting. Wonder. I'll be curious if they do this next year. because I feel like the first two years, the Wisconsin game was great. The black jerseys were great. I would have been a bigger fan of a throwback. I, I think if they I go agree. back to the throwback, Throwbacks like this year would have been the perfect year to wear the 94 Nebraska uniforms during the 94 Nebraska Miami game, or oh, you know yeah. that that would have made sense to me. Right. We go oh, in the crop top uniform, maybe that's <laughs> right. Jake Cotton already wears, wears the that. crop top, yeah, the big boy shoe. pads. Yeah, exactly, yeah, huge pads, neck rolls. A lot of people complained about the the shoes because they looked they looked to be orange. Right, uh, watching the game, does that what? You saw her. Yeah, and, that, and you know, I was talking to Mitch Crank on the radio, former Husker tight end, sure. and he said he was at practice, and even Bo said, those shoes look orange. I mean, I think everybody, <laughs> when they wore them at practice, uh, so it, I don't know if it, it got the play that they would have liked it to have gotten, and, you know, when you hear guys like Michael Wilbon uh, ripping them on national shows, I don't know if that's the good, the good, the type of feedback Nebraska would want to get on. I got to ask you this, because I've, I've heard this a couple of times now, but uh, I understand that some recruits are making decisions based upon apparel. You know, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, Under Armour uh, whoever else is out there. I, I just can't believe that. Is it, do I think you it's see that? More, do you hear that? It's more for basketball. Uh, where literally you hear kids pick a school, and you know, KU is an Adidas school, and um, a lot of kids don't care for Adidas wow. in basketball, and sometimes KU will lose a recruit I've heard in basketball because they're not a Nike school. Mm -hmm. um, and, and But in football, not so much. Um, I, I don't think it plays as big of a factor. Uh, but the alternate uniforms, you'd be surprised. Some of that stuff does matter. Um, it does get kids' attention, like when you see what Oregon does. But I still believe Nebraska doesn't really need to do that. You don't right, see right. Penn State, Alabama, USC. I guess Oklahoma did this year. Uh, but I, I feel like Nebraska is in a club of about 10 that doesn't really need to go alternate uniforms. And if they do, I prefer the throwback style. Did you I, see the Oklahoma uh, I don't know if it was throwback or not. When they played West Virginia. A couple I of think, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they, they wore those and that. But Looked uh, like something from under the big top. <laughs> so, I don't know anyway. what that means. <laughs> so, I don't know what that means. Just shake your head and say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has something to do with circus. Well, let's, anyway. let's, let's move from the circus that is this conversation <laughs> to an in-state recruit who from Syracuse, Nebraska, who I know we're going to take a look at tonight. Yeah, Matt Clark is an offensive lineman from Syracuse, and he does have some offers at this point. Uh, Ohio probably is most high profile. He's got the Dakota teams as well on him. Uh, but I think if Nebraska were to offer one more guy in the state for this year, uh, Matt Clark, I think, would be the guy uh, that would get a look as, on an offensive line. You know, these clips were in the Rivals camp. Um, he he did, didn't have a great day at this camp, but I know Nebraska likes what he does. Uh, had a great summer camp here. He was a heavyweight state wrestling champion as well, um, undefeated last year. Uh, just a big 6'5 guy that is only going to get stronger. He's very smart in the classroom. Kind of fits the profile of an in-state lineman, um, you know, that, that's played at Nebraska for the last 20, 30 years. And you would like to see him get in this class. If the numbers were higher, I think Matt Clark would have an offer. But the fact that Nebraska already has a good group of linemen commits um, and they have small numbers this year at just 18, um, 17, 18, 19, it, you know, it, it doesn't fit. So when you have a kid that's a, a, a very good wrestler as he is, uh, in your experience in recruiting and, and whatnot, do those guys usually turn out to be pretty good football players? Typically, uh, because time? they keep their feet well. Yeah. Um, wrestlers, they don't, they're, they're, their job is not to fall on the ground. And yeah. uh, usually when you're a heavyweight wrestler, you know how to keep balance and stay. You know, Riley Reef, the great Iowa tackle, he was a three-time state champ in South Dakota. Um, and, you know, his brother Brady is going to go to Iowa as well. And he was a guy that was committed to Nebraska at one time. But, you know, that wrestling background, when he developed at Iowa, he was one of the better linemen Iowa's had uh, as a first-round pick. I, I've had the chance to, to do a little work with Kirk Cousins, who's now obviously quarterback for the Redskins, but former Michigan State quarterback. And he told me once that if he could have his way, he'd choose an offensive line that were all former wrestlers. wrestlers. He, said it's, he said in his experience, the guys who wrestled at the high school level turned into the best offensive lineman at the college level. Most everybody I've known that's been a, a, a good wrestler, you know, great strength, great endurance, balance, and uh, 
and just a lot of uh, mental a lot toughness. Of, a lot of mental, mental toughness, exactly. So that's why I asked the question because if I'm recruiting a kid that's a former heavyweight champion. I'm staying on him, man, really staying on him. Malik Collins on the yeah. defensive line, and uh, he never wrestled until he heard John Madden say on the radio, uh, the, the best linemen are also wrestlers. And Malik Collins said, well, I better start wrestling. And then, so that is typically a trend um, in that heavyweight division especially. A yeah. uh, question from the room here. Talk a little bit about possible recruits at quarterback. Well, right now, Lamar Jackson would be the only other target. You know, Kevin Dillman was a quarterback recruit initially, but he's more of an athlete. And I'll be curious kind of where that goes with Kevin Dillman long term. The communication has been somewhat limited. He's not playing varsity football this year. He's playing for the JV down in Texas. He has not been up to Lincoln yet. I don't know when he's coming up to Lincoln. So I would be surprised if. You know, if, number one, he's not going to play quarterback if he comes here. It'd be an athlete role. Um, they don't really need a quarterback is the thing. Tommy Armstrong's a sophomore. Riker Fife is a sophomore. Then you have Zach Darlington, freshman. A.J. Bush, freshman. Um, there are uh, then Johnny Stanton, uh, redshirt freshman. Uh, five quarterbacks that are all freshmen and sophomores. It's not like they need a quarterback just to shove in there with the rest of those guys. So if they're going to take a guy, Lamar Jackson, they would add in a second. He's a four-star dual threat guy out of the Miami area. Uh, but if they don't don't get him. They're on. I'm plenty. They're in on plenty of guys for the 2016 class. You know, one guy this year that's impressed me is an in-state recruit, but now he's on the team. Daniel Davey. I mean, when you watch the way that he plays the game, is that what you saw from him as a recruit, or has he kind of stepped up since he got to Nebraska? Oh, he stepped up big time. When Daniel was at Beatrice, um, you know, he was more of a ball carrier, just a kick return guy, never really played a lot of defense. Uh, football was very new to him, and he came in from Detroit and just developed. Um, and he got to Nebraska, and they knew it was going to be a project, but he was a kid that was 6'1", 6'2". He won the 100-meter dash in high school. So they knew that he had the tools, um, and now it's taken him four years, uh, but now he'll have this year, next year, and, you know, he's a potential NFL guy, I think, down the road if he continues down the path he's on. Adam on the Facebook page says, does does all the Heisman talk for Amir help bring some publicity to the program and grab the attention of some high profile recruits around the country? Well, it does, definitely doesn't hurt. I think number the, the main guy you want to impress is Kendall Bussey. Uh, he's Nebraska's four star running back commit. Uh, that just recently got offered by Notre Dame. Texas A&M's knocking on the door, and you knew it was going to come. These SEC teams are going to come at him harder now. Arkansas continues to recruit him, uh, but you know Kendall Bussey. I'm sure as he watches this season unfold and what Amir Abdullah is doing. Um, you know, you have to think that he's liking it and, you know, he could come in and have a shot of playing. Uh, he is tearing it up right now in Louisiana high school football. He's been named the New Orleans player of the week, I think once or twice already this year. And uh, there's no doubt with what Amir is doing, it's going to help Nebraska. And this Saturday, uh, you'll probably have a viewing audience of what, six, seven million people on ABC for that game. Um, and that will be a big opportunity for Amir Abdullah. No question. When you look ahead for Nebraska, as we try to pare down this recruiting list, as you mentioned many times, the numbers are not big for Nebraska on the recruit commit list that they're going to take this year. What's left? What are priorities? Well, if you ask uh, Rick Kaczynski, he'll tell you about two more Randy Gregory's. <laughs> but I think that is. Oh, is that uh, all? Yeah. Um, that, to me, that's the need. They need at least two defensive end hybrid speed guys. Easier said than done. Um, they basically want a 6'4 guy that's 250 that can run 4'6, you know, and those guys aren't hard to. You know, this is all, they're all, easy, yeah, they're all a couple there. on the crowd tonight. <laughs> but uh, they, they had a kid here um, from Florida a couple weeks ago, Ruben Randall or Ruben Jones that they, they like, and um, a couple guys like that. But I think defensive end would be my number one need uh, if I had a look at the class right now. Maybe one more offensive lineman, uh, a tackle. Um, would be someone else they'd like to try to find. So with, with this Michigan State game and prime time, what does it mean for Nebraska, you know, obviously as a, as a community, but what does it mean for the future? Does it set Nebraska up or Coach Bo up to be the type of coach that can stick around for the next four or five years and solidify those um, recruits that are maybe on the edge? Well, that's hard to say. The I mean, hot, the hot seat, right? It's always a conversation. I think at Nebraska, you're always on the hot seat. Right. I mean, Bill Callahan was a player two away from winning the Big 12, and he got fired the next year. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when you're at a place like this, you can never really be solidified. I mean, Tom Osborne felt like he was going to lose his job. Bob Devaney had petitions go around to try to get him fired, and then won the national championship. So uh, I, I think at a place like this. 
if you can't really afford any bad seasons, but a win over Michigan State would be huge. I mean, the opportunities to get these types of games are rare, and when you get in these games, you have to, to take full advantage of them. I know we don't know all the game times yet as games progress. When's the next big opportunity? Is it Rutgers on the 25th of October for, for people to come to Lincoln and really get a chance to see Nebraska? It just depends on the kickoff. Some um, if it's 11 a.m. or 2:30, and if kids are done playing football at that point, or they have bye weeks, um, or if they can get them in. Uh, usually, the late, the last game of the year, which I believe this year is the Minnesota game. Correct. Yep. Um, you know, some kids are going to be done playing high school football by that point. So maybe the Minnesota game. Uh, but that's why the uh, the Illinois game and the Miami game were so important because Nebraska needed to get guys in for these night games, and the fact that they're so far ahead with the 2015 class, it's allowed them to jump ahead now in 2016, which for Bo Pelini, we've never seen them have three commits this early for the next class. And, and that's, that's most in the Big Ten right now, correct? Right. For that class. Yeah, and you know, there's some other guys that they're really in on as well. I mean, they, I think by signing day, they could have seven or eight guys committed for that class. Hmm. That's Texas-esque. They usually yeah. do 15 or 20 the early. Don't now you they? don't want to. I, I'm a believer that you don't want to get too many early guys because guys develop, they change a lot, and obviously didn't work out too well for Texas over the years. Other than the fact they had a guy named Vince Young that helped elevate that program, but other than that, they really never. You know, getting all those early yeah. commits. I don't know if that was the right approach for Texas. Sean, when you talk about getting a guy in, uh, do they get him in any way they can? Commercial, private. No longer private. No uh, longer they private. stopped doing that a long time ago. Uh, if they uh, trust me, if they could, uh, every kid would fly in here on a private jet. Uh, I think 2003 or two Solich's last year was the last year that I remember them doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just one of those things that the NCAA said not everybody could do it because you're talking ten or fifteen thousand dollars for one private flight, and yeah. that's that's a lot of money for a lot of schools. Makes sense. Sean, we have all given a little bit of a prediction for this weekend. So, what do you expect from Nebraska this weekend? In East I'm Miami. only on the show for recruiting. <laughs> no, I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What a cop but, uh, out. <laughs> no, I, I haven't put my predict. I think Nebraska can win the game. Um, you know, the, the weather is going to be interesting with the rain, uh, how that's going to factor uh, with, you know, the field conditions. I believe it's grass in East Lansing. It is. Um, so the, you just don't know how that's going to play. They're saying 90% chance of rain today out there. So, I mean, I like Nebraska's chances to win. I, I think they're a good matchup. Um, but it's, I think there's still some things that we don't know here with the weather and how it's going to play out. All right, Sean, thank you very much. Appreciate your insights as always tonight. Thank you as well to Matt Davison and to Jay Foreman for stopping by. A reminder, be sure you're back with us. We're back in studio next week to wrap up the Michigan State game. Our special guest will be Jason Peter. I don't know what will happen during that show, <laughs> but be sure you be with us for Nebraska and Michigan State next Tuesday live at 7 Central on NET1. Our crew is very busy because Saturday at 5 o'clock Central time, Nebraska volleyball, John Cook squad on the court against Ohio State. That's Saturday at 5 o'clock Central time on NET1. So you got a little volleyball that leads you right into the football game at 7 o'clock Central time on Saturday night. Thanks to everybody for coming out tonight to the Champions Club. We sure appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much. One last time now, a chance for you to join the NET Sports Partners Club. Larry and Jenny are here once more. Good night, everybody. All right, thanks so much, Kevin. Another terrific job to you, Kevin, and the entire crew. Mm -hmm. Great job, another big red wrap up in the books. And it's really just one of those pieces of NET sports that we bring to you across the state. Our passions here in the state are our high school athletics, mm -hmm. Nebraska, Nebraska volleyball, and it's terrific to be here at NET and be able to bring you some of that outstanding sports action right here on NET. Yeah, we just, uh, Kevin just mentioned, uh, the crew's doing double duty, and so are right. you <laughs> on Saturday covering uh, Nebraska volleyball. And you know, John Cook, said mm -hmm. it's because of NET that really put Nebraska mm -hmm. volleyball on the map. So don't forget that 5 o'clock on yeah. Saturday, NET volleyball, or volleyball, Nebraska volleyball, taking on Ohio State, and we'll have that for you on NET Sports. Hey, uh, and a terrific opportunity for you to continue your support of NET and allow us to continue to bring you some of this exciting sports action right into your living room throughout the year, high school sports all the way through, Big Red Wrap-Up and Nebraska Volleyball, and some special gifts for you as well along the way. And we want to start by telling you about a terrific opportunity you have with this autographed football by some Nebraska greats, the three Heisman Trophy winners. And who knows, maybe someday we'll have four on here, mm -hmm. maybe the end of this year, who knows. But we have three currently, three Heisman Trophy winners. They signed this after Eric Crouch won the Heisman back in 2001, shortly after playing in that national championship game. With your contribution of $600, you can take home a very limited edition 
of this uh, outstanding football. Now, Larry, we're watching those numbers and we're down to single digits for those footballs. So right. if you want one of those and you've been thinking about it throughout Big Red Wrap Up, this is the time to call 800-989-8236 because again, there's just single digits of the numbers of those balls available. And it comes with a certificate of authenticity. So in case it's really a terrific mantelpiece uh, for your Husker collection, the Heisman Trophy football. Other opportunities with your gift to NET, a terrific stadium experience. And I can tell you being behind the scenes with NET Sports, this is a nice opportunity for you. Let's say you're a fan of a Class B football team right now, and they're having a terrific year. Maybe Gretna at 5-0, or Scott, yes, you lost last week, but you're 4-1, looking really good. What a terrific opportunity to call in now, donate at the $280 level, and get skybox seats for that game and everything that comes with it a tour of the stadium a tour behind the scenes of net sports come up into the broadcast booth before the game and visit with adrian he likes to spend uh you know a lot of time with you before the game and so he'll walk you through the uh, the press box here at memorial stadium you know we kind of put this experience together um because i really wanted to do all these things and i usually <laughs> don't get invited to the press box or through the truck so this way, when we take donors through, um, it's a perfect opportunity for all of us to enjoy that. And for $280, that's you and a guest that can be joining us. And we're gonna have a great experience that night. You'll get to watch the game, go through the truck, and all those wonderful things. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And we don't want the folks at Elkhorn or Elkhorn South <laughs> to feel slighted. Yes, we know you're undefeated. You're having a terrific season. You're 5-0. Please call in. Terrific opportunity for you to get tickets to that state championship game in Class B in the Skybox, as well as the entire experience around it for your donation to NET Sports. And that's 800-989-8236. And again, those are very limited too. We're just gonna have a few people at that, uh, that evening with us. So you need to call and get those also. Okay, another opportunity, an autographed football by a couple of head coaches, former Nebraska football coach Tom Osborne and current head coach Bo Pelini. Bo doesn't sign many of these footballs each year, so an opportunity for you to get that with your donation of $240. You know, this is really unique because you have two coaches that are signing uh, this football, and it's got that, uh, it's the Baden football, which <laughs> is the official of the Husker, so you've got the Husker logo on that. Um, even if you went to signing day or whatever it was done right. uh, in August, and maybe had Coach Pelini signed a football, it's not gonna look like this because I guarantee Coach Osborne wasn't there at the time, <laughs> right. so. And of course, Coach Osborne won the conference championship back in 97 and a national title in his final year as the head football coach at Nebraska. Bo Pelini could do that this year. We're all, we're crossing our fingers. Hey, and then also want to remind you of another opportunity, the DVD three-part series of Husker Century. A terrific opportunity. The one that I'm especially fond of is the one when Tippy Dye gave that call mm -hmm. out to Wyoming, <laughs> brought in Bob Devaney and really changed the culture That's of right. Nebraska football back in 1962. And we look out the window here at the mm -hmm. Champions Club and see Memorial Stadium. And we know that the sellout streak right there started in 1962. And it really chronicles that story behind Nebraska football so well in this three-part DVD series of Husker Century. And you know, Larry, even if um, you don't want to contribute at any of these levels we've seen tonight, you can go online and look. We've got the Big Red Wrap-Up baseball cap, $45. Any level of membership is very, very much appreciated. So we can't uh, say thank you enough. Thanks so much for your time thank tonight, you. for watching Big Red, Big Red Wrap-Up, for all the guys behind us and for our entire NET Sports production crew, which does such an outstanding job throughout the year. Thanks so much, and thank you for your contribution to NET Sports. Have a great night. on-demand presentation of Big Red Wrap-Up is made possible by the following sponsors. 
Big Red Wrap-Up thanks these sponsors.